Hi, I'm Chef Zanjohari. Welcome to Agenda One. And today we'll be talking about productivity, especially in the uh, sector of ICT and E and &E. Okay, overview. In 2017, Malaysia recorded uh, quite a, a good number of productivity. We improved by 2.8 percent. Uh, and let, let, let us compare to other countries. Okay, we, Malaysia in 2017, recorded 3.8 uh, percent. So uh, let's say we. Um, uh, we compare it to, let's say, Korea is only 1.9%, Japan 1.4%, United States 0.9%, Singapore 0.8%, Luxembourg 0.6%, and Australia negative 0.5%. So 3.8% for Malaysia last year is actually a very good number. So, uh, but should we, should we be comfortable? And in what area should we uh, further develop and uh, further push our productivity ahead? So today, this, uh, today we're going to uh, talk to two very important individuals, uh, Mr. Ganesh Kumar Banga. He is a head of productivity Nexus ICT. And uh, Yang Bahagia Datuk Sri Wong Siu Hai is the uh, head of Nexus Productivity in Electrics and Electronics. Welcome to the studio, gentlemen. Thank okay, you. first and foremost now, uh, at a very macro level, you know, overall our productivity level is something that I personally very happy at. We are at 3.8% as compared to our neighboring countries. In Singapore is only at 0.8%. So this is a number that we, that I am very proud of. But if you look at sectoral uh, level, uh, you yourself, Dato Sri, looking into the uh, productivity level for electrics and electronics, and Mr. Kumar, uh, Ganesh Kumar, looking at the ICT level, are you uh, happy and are you comfortable at where we are now, especially looking into the sectoral, sectoral, uh, sectoral level? Dato Sri. Okay. Okay, for the E and E industry, uh, we have been doing well. Mm -hmm. we have, in manufacturing, we have grown. Okay, and uh, we have also grown in uh, manufacturing plus plus. Mm -hmm. So, from in, in the sense that we have uh, shared services, we have uh, mm -hmm. design development, and so on. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, in any business, there's always room for improvement. Mm -hmm. And if you want to compete with the rest of the world, we have to continue to improve. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the E and E productivity nexus, we have identified four areas that we need to improve on. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the first one is basically to uh, enhance the higher value added activities, especially in design development. Mm -hmm. Then the second one is to nurture our talent pool because our talent pool is always need to be nurtured in order for us to move up the value chain. And the third is to accelerate the adoption of Industry 4.0. And the last is to strengthen the SME development. These are the four areas we have identified, and mm -hmm. maybe I can just talk a bit more mm -hmm. later mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. this. Oh, okay. Overall, manufacturing sector recorded uh, labor productivity growth of 4.3 percent, uh, and in ICT also not very, not no, you know, it's quite a good number. And uh, Datuk Sri, you you mentioned something about design. You, you mentioned about talent, and you mentioned about the future. Uh, the industry revolution 4.0 and of course ICT is something that is when you talk about ICT you should be very futuristic right sure. um, that would be very challenging uh, in what area should we uh, further enhance our productivity when you talk about ICT per se sure I think ICT today has grown from just being an industry on its own to enable it across all industries. Mm -hmm. IR 4.0, of course, the basis of that is actually IT. So if we look at e and &E, is also looking at IR 4.0 as an implementation mm -hmm. in their own industry. Mm -hmm. So IT today has grown from just being a single industry mm -hmm. to actually being an enabler of all industries. Mm -hmm. And IT is also a catalyst for the increase of productivity among all the industries. Mm -hmm. For example, even in retail, e-commerce, which is an IT mm -hmm. enabling yeah. uh, infrastructure, is actually also affecting mm -hmm. e uh, retail, right? And also increasing the productivity of the retail mm -hmm. uh, sector as well. If you look at IT, I think a key factor that you have to look at is actually value add, because IT actually increases the value add mm -hmm. of across all industries. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the ICT subsector, ICT is actually a subsector under the services sector. Mm -hmm. um, it actually grew 8.4% from 
65.6 billion to 71.1 billion. The value add coming from the ICT sector actually grew 8.4 percent. Mm. So the value add from the ICT sector mm. actually contributed 11.1 percent mm. of the overall services sector, mm. Mm. making it one of the biggest subsectors mm. under the services mm. sector. Mm. So I think the message really is that the ICT sector mm. is an important enabler mm. across mm. all industries, mm. and it is important for mm. us to adopt ICT across all industries. Okay, um, Mr. Ganesh and Dato Sri, let's talk about talent. Um, are you happy with the graduate that we're producing every year? And now, you know, the, the issue or rather challenge with uh, uh, millennials as they are entering, as now more millennials are entering the uh, talent pool, uh, are we at a level where we can actually um, rapidly uh, enhance the productivity level in, in both of these two areas? Let me take yes, that. Okay. first of the three. Okay. Uh, as far as Thailand is concerned, mm. we in the E&E &E industry need good engineers. Mm. So if we are going up the value chain, mm. we need talented engineers. Mm. That means uh, those who score 3.5 and above. What do you think of our new engineers now? Our new engineers, actually, they are okay. Mm -hmm. you know, now, now the attitude is slightly different eh? mm -hmm. because last yeah, they yes. don't stay with the company for a long time. Mm -hmm. they, they find something mm -hmm. more interesting. They mm -hmm. find something that is not So that's suitable. a millennial, right? That's a millennial. Mm -hmm. So we have to, uh, I guess, uh, it's a challenge for the industry mm -hmm. to keep them, to mm -hmm. retain them, to mm -hmm. retain this talent. Mm -hmm. So we have good talent mm -hmm. who have, uh, mm -hmm. can go into design mm -hmm. engineering. We also have good talent mm -hmm. that is, uh, can go into manufacturing, mm -hmm. maintenance and so on. Mm -hmm. But then we also have a segment that I call it uh, yet to be employed engineers. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. And then the question then is what are we going to do about it? Mm -hmm. okay. So uh, in the productivity nexus, we are working on this problem of mm -hmm. the yet to be employed engineers. You know, engineers normally they are employed they, mm. or they are hired, mm. offered letters mm. uh, sometime between February to uh, June. Okay. After that, if they don't get offer letters, then this is what the pool I call yet to be employed mm. engineers. Mm. What do you do with them? Mm. They spend four years in mm. industry, mm. Uh, four years in the mm. university, mm. and we don't want that to be wasted. Mm. So we started a training program mm. for them mm. so that they can uh, get themselves to be employed. Mm. So normally there are kind of two reasons for this. One is soft skills mm. and the other one is the technical skills. Mm. So some of them have both problems, some have one problem and some have the other problem. Mm. So in our program that we are funded by HRDF mm. to do this, mm -hmm. uh, we have 121 engineers signed up mm -hmm. over last year mm -hmm. and uh, have undergone this program mm -hmm. and to date we have 120 of them hired. Mm -hmm. So which means that mm -hmm. Even though in the first round they were not hired mm. by the company, mm. but after further mm. uh, training mm. and, and getting hands-on experience, mm. they are able to be hired. That means that they are capable mm. to improve, mm. to learn and contribute to the industry. All right, I have to take, uh, have, we have to go for a short uh, break, our first break. And when we come back, we will talk about the future jobs and the future opportunities in, uh, in advance of technology and IR 4.0. Uh, the jobs that we have today might not be available in the next five, ten years. You know, you might say maybe in the next ten years there will be no more host. You'll be talking to Siri, for instance, maybe. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna take this short break and when we come back, we're gonna answer that question. Welcome back to Agenda Awani. I'm Shafizan Johari. We're still with uh, Mr. Ganesh Kumar Banga. He's the Head of Productivity Nexus ICT. And yang bahagia, Datuk Sri Wong Siu Hai, the Head of Nexus Productivity in Electrics and Electronics. We talk about productivity in these two sectors and uh, Malaysia as a whole. And to recap, in 2017, Malaysia recorded labour productivity of 3.8% an outstanding number compared to many other developed countries well dato um, we talked about uh, dato you talked about um, how you should retain talent and you talk about the current issues now and how um, millennials is quite challenging for to to keep them in uh, in one place up maybe 
because they, 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 the, the, the issue is they keep, uh, after two years, they keep hopping to other jobs. Okay, now, let's talk about the future challenge, uh, the IR 4.0. Uh, there, there are many reports saying that the, uh, the knowledge that you have now might not be sufficient for you to work or for you to be as, as, as productive in the future. And there are also uh, reports saying that the current job might not be available in the future. And then, uh, of course, we talk about technology. The technology that we have now will not be available or it will be evolved into something that's, that we cannot yeah. imagine now. Okay, uh, to Mr. Ganesh, what will be our... Um, prepare, what, what can we do to prepare ourselves and our talent to, to, to brace these future challenges? Sure. I think one of the challenges, you need to look at the problem statement first mm -hmm. and then from the problem statement, look at the solution. One of the problems in the IT industry and technology in general is that it's reached a pace that gets so quick. It, it's so quick. It reaches a pace that gets so quick and advanced. It moves so quickly that it's impossible to have a graduate that comes out of university to actually be updated on what is going on because mm -hmm. it takes too, too long for the syllabus to be updated and the technology moves fast, too fast. So the only solution to that is actually lifelong learning. The only solution to make sure that our graduates, mm. our workers actually mm. are kept up to date mm -hmm. with the future skills, as you mentioned, mm. is actually lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. Which means that you need to continuously learn the new technologies, <coughs> the new initiatives across mm. your whole career. Mm. Mm. How do you do this? So there are a few ways. One, one important concept is mindset. Mm -hmm. So you need that mindset of lifelong learning, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. we really need to train our graduates that mindset is important for them. We, they need to have the right mindset to actually continue learning. And the second thing is actually a new, a new I would say, a new, um, a new type of learning within the IT industry that's coming out mm -hmm. is micro-learning. All right. Right? So what micro-learning is, is you learn bits. Let's say you want to be an AI engineer mm. in five years. Mm. There's actually an app that you can download. Mm. Right? In fact, India is implementing this. Mm. India is calling it Future Skills. Mm. So, of course, I'm the chairman of PCOM, mm. the IT Association of Malaysia. Mm. So in India, NASCOM, our equivalent in India, mm. actually has a program called Future Skills, mm. which uh, the Prime Minister Modi actually launched in February. Mm in the World Congress mm. of IT mm -hmm. in India this year. Mm -hmm. um, we are actually also hosting the World Congress of IT in 2020. Malaysia mm -hmm. is hosting mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And what, what Modi launched at the, the WCIT was mm -hmm. Future Skills India, mm -hmm. which actually trains people, which is actually an, an app mm -hmm. that actually trains people for 50 new jobs of the future. Mm -hmm. So you select what job mm -hmm. you want to actually get mm -hmm. in, let's say, three to five years. Let's say you want to be an AI engineer you select that job mm -hmm. and the app itself has AI capabilities mm -hmm. to actually put you through daily learnings. All right. So you learn half an hour a day, for example, mm -hmm. a of a particular skill. Mm -hmm. So as you learn half an hour a day, mm -hmm. within six months, you'll go through an assessment all mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. So this is Future Skills India. Mm -hmm. We are looking at implementing something similar mm -hmm. in Malaysia, maybe even emulating uh, Future Skills India. Mm -hmm. And this will actually make sure that mm -hmm. our graduates mm -hmm. are continue to continue to be relevant mm. in the industry not, not just our graduates but our current our current yes, talents that's uh, right. it's about it's about um, enabling and and increase the access for trainings and make it accessible and make it cheap for them make it yes. available all the time that will be that will be our next challenge Yes. Uh, so there are technologies, mm, like I mentioned, mm, future mm, skills mm, that actually enables that to happen. We mm, have all the technologies we need mm, on mobile, etc. Mm, the learning of the future is not going to be going to a classroom mm, over one, two, three months and learn. Mm, the learning of the future is going to be daily, mm, mm, half an hour, learning the latest mm, technologies. Like uh, in manufacturing sector, Dato, um, it's a um, labour intensive sector. Uh, and I'm how would you, how can you enable and, and give such an access of knowledge, impart the kind of future knowledge to, to such a huge group of labours and, 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 and make it sustainable 
So we have to take another short break, and we uh, and when we can when we come back, we're going to answer that question. Okay. All right. Welcome back to Agenda Wani. All right, uh, Datuk Sri, uh, challenge now. Your sector, the manufacturing sector, is a labour-intensive sector. How do you ensure that uh, your, the, the talent that you have now in this sector can be trained and it's not just one, you know, one year or, or, or one off training, but it's an ongoing process in everyday learning? How are you going to do that? So I think, first of all, I must uh, say that... Uh, Manufacturing is not labour intensive, especially mm. in the E and E industry. Mm. You know, we have just visited a few uh, companies recently, mm. and you walk in there, the uh, place is highly automated. Mm. Even though there are people, because mm. there are many many lines, the mm. volume that is needed in electronics mm. is huge. It mm. go by the millions and the billions of units. Mm. So therefore, you need many lines. Mm. So you need people. Mm. But the process is already highly automated, mm. so that's number one. Mm. Number two is that, uh, to touch on the same point as what uh, Ganesh has been saying, mm -hmm. is that you need continuous learning, a lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. So in the industry, mm. in manufacturing industry, we try to, what you call, have a workforce transformation program mm. to help the operators at the lowest level to learn uh, technical work, to learn technicians' work, mm so that they can migrate from being a normal operator, a standard operator, now to a manufacturing specialist or to be a technician. Mm. And that journey has to continue. Mm. And then in Malaysia, we have so many open universities that you don't need to mm. go and sign up full-time. Mm. You can mm. do part-time mm. and continue to learn. Mm. So that's, to me, very important to continue to upgrade yourself and keep up with technology. As mm. you know, technology keeps changing. You heard that. Uh, last time was two, three years before a change, then we came two years, one year, six months. It's mm. changing all the time it's, and it is influencing the way we live, the way we work, the way mm. we learn. Mm. And so therefore, whoever, the mm. young millennium, have to mm. keep up with this change mm. so that they can keep on learning mm. because that's the only way. In your communication with the members mm. of the industry, is it difficult to, to get... Uh, to get the industry, uh, to get the people industry, especially those in the labour mm -hmm. sector, uh, be it engineers, you know, uh, how th is it difficult to get them to impart more knowledge? On uh, the daily actually, basis? it is not too difficult. Mm. You know, uh, when I launched the master's program to encourage engineers mm. to upgrade themselves and mm. to learn more about. Mm innovation and mm. research work because we wanted them to learn more mm. in their uh, area of work. Mm. All right. I thought I could not get many people to sign up mm. because I only have 25 places, mm. but I have 75 people sign up. And now, mm. you know, we, uh, after that, we have a few hundred people sign up, which mm. means that mm. even engineers, mm. despite them being so busy, are mm. willing to improve themselves by mm. studying masters. Mm. In the area of technical work for the operators, mm. you know, there is a program by many companies upgrading yeah. the operators. Mm. And we, today, we have of six companies, mm. we have already 5,000 of mm. these workers being trained to be technicians. Mm. Every day, they are going for classes while working. Mm. So I think that there is a desire mm. to improve oneself mm. in our workforce. So mm. that's very good. Mm. But the difference, I guess, is that when mm. we say work may be going away and mm. so on, mm. the key is, mm. other than mindset, mm. is what we call greed. Mm. to have a passion and perseverance mm. to continue to improve. Mm. Mm -hmm. If you have that, mm -hmm. then you can mm. be successful mm. and keep learning. Okay, in short, Yanish, in 2018, uh, with the new spirit and new Malaysia, how can we further uh, you know, thrive uh, productivity in, in your sector? I think the key is to make sure that our graduates have the right mindset mm. and greed, mm. as uh, mm. mentioned by the Sri. Any, anything pol policy-related? I, I think policy related is to continue to impl continue to to encourage mm. the private sector mm. to actually adopt latest technologies. Mm. You know, I was once in India and I met the um, chief minister of uh, Bangalore mm. or the state where Bangalore is located, mm. and we asked him um, why is Bangalore so successful mm. as a IT mm. as a IT yeah. hub. Mm. And he responded, we are successful because the government didn't get involved. Mm. We let the private sector run. All right. So I think the key policy, a high-level policy uh -huh. that mm. 
mm. the government should look into is mm. actually to work together with the private sector. Mm. So MPC's uh, engagement mm. or initiative which we are participating on right. where the public and private sector right. work together mm -hmm. to improve productivity is mm. one example of, a, of an excellent initiative to actually encourage productivity. So I think more public-private sector mm. partnerships need mm. to be done mm. to actually grow the mm. IT industry. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Ganesh Kumar Banga, the Head of Relativity and Access ICT, and Yang Bahagia Datuk Sri Wong Siu Hai, uh, the Head of Access Productivity in Electrics and Electronics. And uh, we were talking about the productivity and how we should uh, further strive for productivity and increase our productivity level in Malaysia and uh, how we can never uh, be comfortable at the level we are now. In year 2017, we recorded a 3.8% of uh, labour productivity and I'm very sure that uh, both of you want to see this number to grow and uh, we shall see how uh, the number performs in 2018 and until then you might have your comment or suggestion please share it with us on our Facebook and our Twitter until then I'm Chef Zan Johari thank you for watching